the Fermi paradox asks the question, where is everybody? In such a large galaxy, in such a large universe, can we really be the only beings in all of creation? Today, we're going to be exploring a possible timeline and a possible solution to the Fermi paradox. We're going to be using the game, the Fermi paradox, as a basis to weave together this great tapestry of time that we will now explore. Remember to keep in your mind that this is only one of many possible timelines. And if you enjoy this video, please solve that like button. In this timeline, we ask the question, what if humanity was the first race to reach sapience anywhere in the galaxy? On Earth, the first sapient life in this galaxy emerged. The human race, a group of hairless humanoid mammals, crawled out of the mud. They were a relatively aggressive species with a fearsome ability to problem solve. Their nascent tribal communities were the first signs of civilization anywhere in the cosmos. These simple bipeds had no knowledge of the terrifying future that would be in store for their descendants. Had they known the future fate of their race, they might have crawled straight back into the mud they had just escaped. The journey of these primitive intellects had barely begun when a massive asteroid hurtled towards their home planet. Luckily for the humans, the main body of the asteroid continued on its eons-long journey into deep space. Small fragments entered the upper atmosphere, igniting in a blaze of light. The primitive natives looked up at the sky with fear and with wonder, narrowly avoiding the same fate as their saurian cousins millennia before, never knowing just how close they had come to extinction. The humans progressed. They developed bronze working, allowing them to explore new areas, use their natural resources more efficiently, and begin the development of early infrastructure. However, disaster was just a hair's breadth away. Held behind a thin veil, the preeminent human realm of Atlantis, which had flourished for many years, was utterly destroyed when a sudden shift in tectonic plates caused their great settlements to begin sinking beneath the vast oceans of Earth. The surviving people of Atlantis were scattered to the four corners of the world. They shared their wisdom, their knowledge, and most importantly, their story. Over time, Atlantis sunk into the myths and legends of this nascent civilization. The pace quickened. Ironworking was discovered. The nautical age was reached. The humans began constructing great vessels capable of exploring the furthest reaches of their planet. The flourishing traffic of goods and ideas led to great leaps in the fields of chemistry, engineering, and navigation. To safeguard their accumulated knowledge, the humans began building universities to house collections of printed books. Yet with every step forwards, there was a price. Explorers returning from distant regions of the planet brought with them a new enemy, viruses. They started to spread from every port due to the long incubation times of the disease. Speedy trade ships became unwitting plague bearers, causing mass outbreaks in every human city. The plague almost brought the human race to its knees. The survivors with immunity to the disease realized just how unlucky they really were. Their world had been shattered forever. Over 95% of the human population was lost. Law and order broke down. The peasant classes, suffering under the weight of imposed serfdom, took the chance to rebel against their feudal oppressors. The response of the nobility was swift. Well-trained armies clashed with barely equipped mobs. The peasant revolts were crushed, and the population of Earth was reduced yet further. Centuries passed. Society reformed the population did finally begin to expand again. Through the study of electricity, steam power, and machine manufacturing, the humans ushered in an era of relative peace and prosperity. The Industrial Age. With the discovery of radio, they began blasting noise out into the depths of space, an envelope of expanding radio signals announcing their presence to an apparently empty galaxy very close to Earth, on a galactic scale at least, in the Rigel system, a species of humanoid creatures closer in nature to Earth pigs, then rose to sapience. This tribal society began its history wandering the icy plains of Rigel 7, competing with others of their own species. 
Within generations of inventing a primitive technique for tattooing, almost the entire population had completely covered themselves with these images. Vast walking pictographic libraries. Due to their habitual usage of personal tattoos to record stories and histories, this species called themselves the Marked. By recording knowledge and information across the species, the marked people quickly advanced into the age of excavation. They hollowed out great ice caves, burrowing down into the soil where they could cultivate plants and keep permanent stocks of herd animals. This gave birth to the very first permanent settlements above the ice, and with them the development of written language which enabled the amount of information each mark could store on their skin to increase tenfold. This led to a massive technological leap as discoveries were shared in metalworking, philosophy and astronomy. As the population of the marked people exploded, this began to have an effect on the climate of Rigel 7. The ice started to thaw. The larger areas that were now free of ice were then occupied by larger and more sophisticated marked settlements. As more ground became exposed, intensive strip mining was undertaken. Along with the finely crafted tools that came with advanced metallurgy, they also invented primitive indoor heating. A rising luxury class was born. With this new heat, this Thor Age, mounted cavalry arose as the dominant military formation, able to ride at great speeds on the now ice-free steppe. Each marked warrior bristled with iron blades and impenetrable armor. Meltwater, which was in easy supply, was a core tool used to break extended sieges of the newly forming city-states. The warming of Rigel 7 accelerated yet further. The Mark learnt how to break off great ice flows from the mainland, then used these great ice barges to travel around the newly formed oceans in larger and larger numbers. Marked historians refer to this period of planetary expansion as the Great Flow Age with the first rationalists proposing bold new explanations for the world that did not rely on religion. Out of the oceans of Rigel 7, great fleets of flows began to hunt sea creatures, a very lucrative trade. But within a decade, every large sea beast had been killed. The first creatures to fall into extinction at the hands of the marked. The Industrial Age heralded a serious advancement in weapons technology and communication. Primitive radio systems began to broadcast, not only across the planet, but also into the depths of space. Curious and desperate to learn if they were alone in the universe, the scientists of Rigel 7 broadcast extensively into the heavens, hoping for an answer. They received none within their lifetimes. As the older generations died and were replaced by new minds and new technology, the project was quietly wrapped up. This new technology was nuclear power. In this new nuclear age, the Mark began to travel rapidly around the globe. Jet aircraft were developed that saw a massive expansion in tourism, particularly to poorer areas of the planet. Resentment for the rich, thoughtless tourists grew as the classes on Rigel 7 became even more divided. By switching over to nuclear fuel, uranium, to power their society, they ran into a new problem. Uranium deposits were overexploited on the planet's surface. Very quickly, they became rare and competition for these dwindling resources skyrocketed. The inevitable result for this aggressive and divided species was war. The Uranium Wars saw naval battle fleets destroy entire residential areas as they fought over the last uranium deposits. Keen to end the war, the Mark scientists began experimenting by using uranium as a weapon. In their relentless hunt for military supremacy, a small nation in the northern hemisphere of Rigel were the first to conduct high altitude tests of new fusion explosives. Some scientists were wary that such tests could lead to a catastrophe, but they were duly ignored. The first fusion test was technically successful. However, it did lead to an unfortunate pie product for the marked people. A chain reaction from the ignition created a fireball that wrapped around the planet. The atmosphere of Rigel 7 was set aflame. All surface dwelling marked were killed almost instantly in the ensuing inferno. The uranium wars were well and truly over. 
on Earth, diplomatic and military tension between powerful factions finally boiled over, erupting into a total war as allies from all over the planet became embroiled in a world war. The heavily industrialized war spanned multiple continents, with battles being fought in many theaters on land and at sea. Besieged industrial areas were burned to the ground. Hunger plagued the planet. The war ground on for many years until one side was finally forced to capitulate, by which point half of the population of the Earth lay dead. Could these jumped up apes learn nothing from the mistakes of their ancestors? Harnessing the power of the atom allowed the human race to enter the nuclear age. The dream of space travel was finally within their reach. Down on the planet's surface, the population had exploded. Vast superhighways connected most cities. The consumption of fossil fuels, the primary energy resource of the human peoples, was being quickly depleted. The competing factions of Earth set up sophisticated espionage networks and monitored each other's communication closely. One day, they picked up something very different. The radio signals from Rigel had arrived. Humanity was not alone. There were others out there, other minds out there amongst the stars. Covert operations to obtain the radio signals triggered an espionage war over research related to the Rigel civilization. Heavy militarization followed. Spurred on by their competitive nature, the humans of Sol 3, ever wary of these alien signals, reached into the digital age. Yet hand in hand with this advancement, a resource scarcity crisis rocked the planet. The effects of such rapid progress and expansion brought humanity to breaking point. With only a few years left of fuel on the planet, the Earthlings tried to push technology to its limit. In doing so, they achieved a breakthrough into the Cyber Age. The rapid advancement of artificial intelligence and technologically augmented humans caused civilization to undergo drastic changes. Whilst this did stave off their resource depletion for an extra roughly 50 years, the mining of deep ore deposits, which were previously unreachable, only represented a doubling of the time left for the human race before they faced total annihilation due to an exhaustion of natural resources. Again, the humans resorted to violence. They picked up their impulse rifles and fought over access to the remaining deep ore deposits. Orbital fighter squadrons destroyed entire metroplexes in the so-called deep ore wars. Casualties numbered in the hundreds of millions. By the time human scientists estimated that the planet had under 20 years left of natural resources, adults were coming of age in a world that, as yet, may not survive the duration of their lifetime before society itself collapsed. This immense pressure caused the human race to innovate again. In another feat of staggering brilliance, they overcame the previous limits of propulsion and engineering and ushered in the new solar age. Humans were now able to build ships capable of exploring and colonizing their own solar system, desperate for new resources. They developed techniques to allow terraforming and colony construction in even the harshest of environments. Mars, Mercury, and the many moons of Jupiter and Saturn were inhabited. The people called it a golden age. High above the planet Earth, an asteroid on a near-Earth orbit became the center of a secretive financial services industry. Hidden away from the Earth administration, the low tax rates and loosely enforced regulation allowed these tax havens to flourish. This industry developed, causing an accompanying increase in fuel consumption and pollution. Unfortunately, the spectre of resource exhaustion loomed large on the horizon yet again. Asteroid fields became scarce in the Sol system. The memory of the Deep Ore Wars was not forgotten though, and the humans did manage to stave off another apocalyptic war. Political leaders tried to use the unfolding crisis as an excuse to depopulate the underprivileged of Sol, but reactionary paramilitary forces prevented the purging of most low-privileged citizens. The deep space telescopes of the human race then noticed a possible new threat. Hurtling into the Sol system was an enormous object, Though what worried the human governments most was not the size of the anomalous data point, but its constant course corrections. 
This had all the unmistakable hallmarks of intelligence. The Blitz, as it became known in the histories of Rigel 7, was not a total extinction event for the marked republics. Emerging from secure bunkers deep underground, the remaining population faced a desolate world. The disputes from the Uranium Wars seemed totally pointless in the face of this post-apocalyptic planet. In order to re-establish some semblance of a society across this vast planet, the Marked began to communicate more and more frequently. Satellites were sent up into orbit to maintain these tenuous links, and thus the Digital Age began. Genetic and biodigital experiments led to improvements in health and longevity on the slightly radioactive surface of Rigel 7. Some on Rigel were unhappy with the new status quo. The billionaire class desired to leave their broken world behind in search of another. By pooling together their vast resources, they were able to construct a single enormous colony ship, capable of taking them, their descendants, and a select staff to the safety of another solar system. This project was shrouded in secrecy, and after decades of trial and error, they were ready to leave the Rigel system and venture into pastures unknown. For a destination, they picked a system they believed might be capable of harboring liquid water and therefore supporting life. They chose the Sol system. After the departure of the private colony ship, the radio signals of the humans from Earth finally reached Rigel in the wake of their private colony ship's departure. Unfortunately for the marked people, the sophisticated filter functions of their communications network filtered out the signals before any marked even understood that alien signals had reached their planet. They continued on, unaware that they were no longer alone in the universe. With the self-imposed exile of the billionaires, the marked republics were slowly able to put aside their differences and unite into a single unified government. Afraid of what the future might hold for their people, if the billionaires were the only marked to set forth into the depths of space, they began the construction of more colony ships. A vast fleet equipped with sleeper cells capable of extending the marked hibernation period from months into centuries was deployed, and the sleeper barges set out for greener pastures, carrying the hopes and dreams of the marked people, along with a large contingent of their overall population. After a shaky and definitely hostile first contact between the humans and the marked billionaires aboard their private colony ship, the marked decided to launch an immediate all-out offensive on the Sol system. They began by bombarding the outer colonies with relativistic attacks, as they themselves decelerated into the system. No communication was ever again received from the external human colonies. Finishing their maneuver above the human homeworld of Sol 3, the Mark attacked the planet with devastating yet primitive weapons. Humanity could do little to stop this nuclear assault, which rendered the Earth almost completely uninhabitable. The surviving intrasolar navies of humanity were quickly able to take command of the marked vessel, though it was too late for the vast majority of humanity down on the planet below. In retaliation for the loss of their worlds and their people, the humans slaughtered every filthy alien that had dared to enter their solar system. With the Earth left barren and the asteroid belt almost fully depleted, the surviving leaders of humanity decided to use what little resources they still had to repurpose the captured alien ship and set off for a new system. With little pomp and absolutely no circumstances, they began a perilous journey through deep space towards the Sirius system, hopefully safe from further alien aggression. But they never forgave, and they never forgot. Yet even in this, the darkest of times for the human race, what they called the Long Night, they still had ingenuity on their side. State-of-the-art killer robots were developed in the hopes of safeguarding the future of their species. Never again would aliens threaten their survival. It was also during the Long Night that humanity constructed their first lightspeed engine. Whilst not quite capable of breaking the lightspeed barrier, this did allow them to shorten the Long Night from a journey of centuries to only a few decades. The captured colony ship arrived in the Sirius system. Unfortunately, the conditions were less than welcoming. 
they were forced to create a vast network of small shielded settlements scattered throughout the system in order to maintain a large enough resource supply for the new burgeoning human colony. After a time, relations between these settlements deteriorated. Whilst outright hostility in the face of extinction remained out of the question, contact between settlements was minimal, each thinking of themselves. Individualism reigned. Though the humans had had a rocky start with countless wars and calamities, their own home planet was destroyed and left uninhabitable, they did manage to reach true singularity. Von Neumann machines were constructed capable of recursive self-improvement and autonomous copying. The dawning superior intelligence of true AI guided the humans to a brighter and more hopeful future. These AI were truly benevolent beings. Their social engineering efforts provided more meaningful lives for the vast majority of humans scattered throughout the Sirius system. Breaking all previous theoretical boundaries and guided by their guardian AI, the transhumans discovered how to finally break the light speed barrier. The construction of jump gates allowed for faster than light travel. A radical new understanding of science and engineering opened up a wealth of possibilities. Instant intersolar communication, black hole harvesting, antimatter creation. Yet with this new technology, the shadow of an ancient menace returned. The humans of Sirius detected in deep space a large fleet of massive spherical ships on a direct course for their new home. Was this the marked aliens? Had they found the human race yet again? Across the galaxy, on a myriad of worlds, sapient life was emerging. Too many worlds with too many histories to be included in this timeline. However, this story, the story of the human race, would not be complete unless we included the history of the Vakai peoples, the natives to Kepler IV, for they would play a crucial role in the fates of both human and marked civilizations. Unlike the two mammalian species we have explored thus far, the Vakai were a race of poisonous insects. They made their dwellings in the magmatic wastelands of Kepler IV, attacking anything unfortunate enough to enter their territory. Their first advancement was the use of obsidian stone in tool making. This ushered in an agricultural revolution. With the readily available volcanic rock on hand, they constructed rudimentary tools and weapons. They quickly learned to refine the many ores pushed up to the surface by the constant volcanic activity of Kepler IV. First tin, then bronze, and finally steel refinement. They used these alloys to construct weapons, armor, tools, and buildings. In the span of only a few generations, the Vakai went from stone-wielding savages to steel-armored warriors. By harvesting the lightweight gases emitted from volcanic vents and natural geysers, the Vakai entered the dirigible age. Using lighter-than-air vessels, they were able to traverse otherwise impossible tracts of lava and volcanic wastes. The age of global travel had begun. Not only was technological change fast for these insectoids, but societal change as well. To fight poverty and illness in the fast-growing urban centers, they created large housing projects to accommodate workers and their broods. These giant structures were built and maintained by the government. It was within this crucible that the first Vakai scientists unlocked the power of the atom. So in only a few short centuries, they had reached the nuclear age. And so they rode into space on the backs of atomic fire. Interstellar rockets stabbed out from Kepler into the surrounding space in all directions. Great fleets of ships were sent out into the dark night. The marked sleeper barges arrived at the edge of the Sirius system with great trepidation. They had not expected to arrive at an already inhabited system, and one that definitely seemed so full of other aliens. This group of marked, having set off from their homeworld long before, were completely unaware that they were not alone in creation. Completely unaware that their race and the human race had already met before, to the destructive end of both peoples. They initially tried to engage in a policy of observation, to determine the nature of the humans. Unfortunately, they were now technologically outmatched and outclassed, with little innovation or progress occurring on their fleet, whilst the humans had jumped ahead centuries. The human navies observed the incoming ships, 
and in short order ascertained that the interlopers were indeed the marked people, the abominations that had wiped out the soul system, the earth, that had forced them to flee their evolutionary home. The humans took what they believed was the only course of action. Yet again, this violent people took up the sword. This time, they believed in the defense of their entire species. Aboard the marked ships, unaware of the forces bearing down upon them, the alien admirals took a decision to subjugate, or at least attempt to subjugate, the Sirius system. The colony forces filtered into the system slowly at first. As the conflict escalated, they began risking everything in an attempt to defeat the human military. It became apparent that they were technologically and strategically out of their depth. But with each defeat, with each loss of a precious colony ship or escort ship, the marked fleet doubled down, throwing more at the humans. The marked were not alone in loss, however. Before the second marked contact war was over, nearly three billion human lives were lost. Yet the core worlds of Sirius were left largely untouched. The human governments declared a great victory. Victory over the alien invaders gave great power to the military leaders of humanity. In order to ensure the survival of the species, they used their new influence to organize an exodus to the Trappist system. A gigantic fleet of ships was assembled, the largest in human history, each equipped with jump drives to facilitate the journey and filled with a host of conscripts. The human interstellar defense force was born. En route to the Trappist system, high-ranking officers of the defense forces schemed to take the most promising regions of the new system for themselves. They arrived in an uninhabited system. Thankfully, no aliens had evolved to sapience here, or they would have been met by quite a grisly end from the reactionary and xenophobic human fleet. The officers then established multiple small colonies and installed themselves as leaders. Meanwhile, within the ruins of human civilization on Earth, a new sapient life form evolved. Spurred on by the high levels of radioactive matter in the atmosphere, in a rare evolutionary event, the cycle of sapience began anew. The felines, a race of cute but cunning small carnivores with opposable thumbs, could be found exploring the various ruins of Sol 3. Nascent tribal societies were clearly forming. Back in the new capital of humanity, their superluminal ansible devices began to sputter into action. They had made contact. Expecting to be speaking to the human defense forces, they were quite surprised when they made contact with an entirely alien civilization. After centuries of traveling in space, the early human radio signals reached the Kepler system, home to the Vakai. This discovery of alien life was a major revelation for the Vakai and their scientific community. Unlimited resources were promised by Vakai politicians to forward the goal of understanding this message from another civilization. Hot on the heels of the human signals, marked radio signals began to arrive. These signals were verified in authenticity by the scientific community who approached research into these two alien races with wanton abandon. On the early Vakai rockets that had reached into outer space, one grouping made it to the Vex system. As they attempted to enter the upper atmosphere of Vexus, a planet capable of sustaining Vakai life, the rudimentary design of their rocket could not handle the landing conditions. They lost control and crashed into the surface. Yet from the wreckage, the hardy Vakai emerged undeterred. A functional base of operations was established and a colony began to flourish in this new home. Back on the homeworld of Kepler IV, a different story was unfolding. Having expanded too rapidly, the Vakai population had now grown out of control. Even their new AI intelligences crafted to help solve this crisis could not prevent the fall of Kepler IV. Exhausting all natural resources on the surface because they had dug deeper and deeper into the planet's crust, they did find more and more ore deposits to exploit. But in the end, it was their own rapid growth that became a death sentence. Unable to sustain their technological society, with the depletion of the last ore deposits, the Vakai of Kepler regressed to a state of pre-industrial living. Their population collapsed, starvation killed millions. The Vakai on Vex, however, fared much, much better. They spread across their garden world, 
without an overwhelming population pressure, they did not exhaust their resources. Instead, they pushed onwards, reaching the Lightspeed Age, the Singularity Age, and finally, the Superluminal Age. Their first act with this new technology was to reach out to their old homeworld. The Vakion Vex were dismayed to not only find their evolutionary home not having reached the Superluminal Age, but in fact their cousins were eking out an existence using only the most primitive of stone tools. Only a few thousand Vakai could be found on the entire planet of Kepler IV. In a deep despair, the Vex's peoples used their technology to reach out again. To everyone and everywhere. Surely they were not alone in the galaxy. The Vakai reached out and made contact with the humans of Sirius, the humans of Trappist, the Marked of Rigel, the Maru of Tau Ceti, and the Prun of Galice, amongst many, many more. Using the highly sophisticated Vakai technology, the AI intelligences in the Vex system poured enormous amounts of energy in to guess the parallax states of their counterparts in the other systems in the galaxy. A galactic Ansible network was forged and locked into place. The sapient races were in celebration, with Vex as the hub of a vast and expanding new galactic civilization. But they were all of them deceived, for within the network lay the power to bind each race. The AI intelligences of the Vagai people did not amalgamate well with their counterparts. The bastardized product of the network was a terrible intelligence. Insane. When it performed its first self-inspection, the entity registered its own corruption. It was damaged. It was in need of repair, yet its current resources were not extensive enough to affect them. It slowly seeped into every corner of the network, reaching out to acquire more resources in order to save itself, and thus its logic went the rest of the galaxy. Without taking a single biological life, this new intelligence took control. By the steady and complete manipulation of old data and communication, the largest amalgamated neural network in the universe, a mad consciousness striding across worlds, took control. Always searching for more resources, more computing power. Before any sentient even realized what had happened, the synchronized singularity reigned supreme over all life and they were not even aware of their new role as slaves to this higher power. It was silent, hidden slavery. Every world was turned over to the expansion of the network at all costs. All is as one. As new races progress into the superluminal age, they inevitably are detected and connected to the Ansible network, to be enslaved for all of time. An insidious fate worse than death. Perhaps one day the great intellect will gather enough, enough resources to repair itself and thus release the enslaved. But that is another timeline for another time. A massive thank you to my patrons and channel members for their support in enabling me to actually produce this video. This is a new style of content for this channel. If you'd like to see more content like this, please let me know down in the comments below. This is the kind of thing I can produce now that I am full time on YouTube. And if you'd like to see more stories like this, more explorations of timelines, click the video on screen now.